Welcome back. You're watching the Jacksonville History Show, brought to you by the Jacksonville Historical Society and Comcast. I'm Harry Reagan. And my guest, who was interviewing a guest uh, in the past segment, is Emily Liska, Executive Director of the Historical Society. Welcome back to the second half of the show. Well, hello, Harry. It's good to still be here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some unfinished business from the first half. We want to make sure that we uh, plug mm -hmm. a program that uh, Judge Drayton is going to be doing for us down at Old St. Andrews. That's right, February the 23rd, a Thursday evening, uh, 7.30, Judge Drayton will be talking on the history of African Americans in, uh, in law lawyering and the law in Jacksonville. So more of what you saw in that first segment. That's right. And an opportunity to come and, uh, and visit us in person at, the, uh, at Old St. Andrews. That's right. Across the street from the arena. That is where next, it is. Next door to the baseball ground. And people can find out more on our website as well. Exactly. Now, when I had Sam Kavaris here uh, talking about the history of football in Jacksonville, we played Stump Sam. Uh-oh. So we could <laughs> you don't have something we, there, We could play you? Stump Emily. Oh, but no. But I'm not going to do that. Thank uh, you. Thank I'm not you. going to ask you the name of Andrew Jackson's horse. Ah, do Sam you Patch. <laughs> but I learned that from you, actually. <laughs> so we could go on. But uh, someday we'll have to do a uh, trivia, a history trivia test for, uh, for our viewers. Oh, no. And we'll post it online. <laughs> But we, we kind of wanted to focus on 2006 mm -hmm. at the Historical Society. So uh, a, a lot of continuing what we were doing in 2005 mm -hmm. and 2004 and so forth, but may, maybe some new things that people could look forward to. What, what can we say about 2006? Well, uh, two big things in 2006. We have more of what I think is the most beautiful book ever written on Jacksonville history, and that is the Jacksonville Family Album, uh, Harry, just next to you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 475 of the most uh, engaging photos on the city's history you'll probably ever see printed in one book. Uh, it was a sellout within uh, about seven and a half months. We reprinted. It probably will never be printed again. So we now have another supply at the Jacksonville Historical Society and in some of your fine bookstores around the city you can find the Jacksonville Family and Album. And you can buy them uh, from us. That's right. Right there at Old St. Andrews. That's right. And uh, it's written by Wayne Wood and Emily Liska and Carol Fader. That's correct. And I'm uh, very proud of the product. And if someone is a native of the city or you've made this place your home, uh, or you want your children to really be plugged into the history of the area and, and love and appreciate uh, Jacksonville and North Florida, you should have this on your bookshelf. And that's one of the things that the Historical Society really wants to uh, do is to connect with newcomers who might be interested in finding out about this place that they've just moved to. Mm -hmm. It's not just people who have lived here for generations who are inherently interested in history, but people who want to find out about this city that, that, that is now their home. So we would welcome them to become members of the Historical Society and come and find out uh, what's happening, find out, uh, you know, attend some of the programs. Absolutely, and, and uh, they can find out more by calling the Historical Society or going on www.jackshistory.com, and we do welcome people at our meetings. And also, if some of these books uh, are not in someone's budget right now or they're not sure that's what they want, all the public libraries keep these books as well for, for the general public to, to check out and to, to read. The Historical Society may be publishing more books in 2006 and beyond. It's something that we do on a regular basis now. We actually are. We have another book coming out. This one's a facsimile, so this one's not quite the task that the Jacksonville Family Album was. Uh, T. Frederick Davis's Jacksonville, Florida and Vicinity will be republished. It was. Uh, it is a book dating to roughly 1925, and it's the history of this area from its very uh, Tamuquin Indian beginnings through 1924. And that will be available through us in about five to six months from now, and that will be a facsimile edition. So that's exciting. And uh, that's uh, unavailable. You can't find it at this, uh, in these days. So. Virtually unavailable. Yeah. Used bookstores are possibly a source, and you're probably paying quite a bit. Well, uh, Bubba, our director, is going to kill me if we don't go to uh, <laughs> some of the pictures that he has prepared to, for us to show. Uh, kind of just a uh, sample of some of the historical photos that uh, the Historical Society has. So let's take a look at some of them, and you, you tell me what we're seeing. Uh, we're looking at one that uh, I'm so fond of. This is amazing. We have this in our archival repository. 
This is during the Civil War, Union troops occupying the streets of Jacksonville, Florida. This is specifically Bay Street you're seeing, and it washes right up, uh, well, the river washes right up to Bay Street in those days before we built out over our river. And what you're seeing uh, in, in the forefront of the picture is a dock going out into uh, the St. John's River. And so, they didn't know that it was a river and not a bay? Uh, it's so big that it looks like a bay, I guess. Well, actually, you know, that appears like a bay, but of course you know where the name Bay Street came from. It actually came from the fact that uh, when the streets of Jacksonville were laid out, a rope was tied to an old bay tree as the marker to oh. lay out the town. So, of course, that's a fast-moving river out there. And, and so that is how the name Bay Street, it is believed, came about. The old bay trees lining the riverfront because that is not a bay, as mm -hmm. you well. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's a big mm -hmm. river. It is a big river. Okay, let's, let's see some more uh, oh, they're hurrying photos us. here. Uh, that is the first bridge crossing the St. John's River at Jacksonville. Uh, that is, of course, not a bridge for vehicular traffic, but for trains. And this would take the tourists out of Jacksonville. Big tourist town in those days. That's how we made our living. But now tourists could begin to head to points further south, and Jacksonville had to reinvent itself. And is eventually. that in approximately the same place as the railroad bridge is today? <laughs> Almost feet away from where today's. Uh, in fact, that railroad bridge replaced this one in 1925. So those trains are today. Uh, passing over a bridge that's roughly 80 years old, the replacement to this bridge, yes. So first there were uh, steamboats mm -hmm. as a major means of uh, travel uh -huh. uh, in this that's part right. of the that's right, that was the highway. Then railroads. That's this, correct. And of course horses along mm -hmm. the way. But uh, long before automobiles were ever thought That of. is right. For, that was 1890, our first bridge for vehicular traffic uh, passing over the St. John's was 1921. So that gives you some perspective there. Mm -hmm. uh, more photos. Uh, my goodness. Uh, 1898, this was a victory celebration. Uh, this was celebrating uh, the U.S. victory in the Spanish-American War, uh, throwing the oppressive Spain out of Cuba. Uh, and so Jacksonville, of course, played a pivotal role in that. And this is a celebration in Riverside Park. And the young women and Uncle Sam there, mm -hmm. they're performing sort of what uh, in those days was uh, a vignette. They would pose, and it would be as though a painting appeared before you, your eyes. And the whole town turned out to watch this, and this was a Thanksgiving of 1898. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's take another look at, t take a look at the next one. Ah, famous uh, uh, photo. It is. It, this is probably the most notable uh, photo, or most historians will say the most important photo in Jacksonville, Florida's history. Uh, this is during the Great Fire of 1901, to date still the most major fire in the southeast in the metropolitan city, greater than the burning of Atlanta during the Civil War. Here you have uh, about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, citizens escaping across Hogan's Creek, and soon uh, at least half of that bridge will collapse soon thereafter, and you see the town burning down behind the citizens. People are literally running for their lives. So. Uh what, 144 square blocks or something? Uh, uh, it, 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 what, yeah, four, 466 all of downtown, Jacksonville. All of downtown Jacksonville burned to the ground. 2,368 buildings gone in eight hours. And the ironic thing, the interesting thing, is the wind was blowing uh, so that it spread throughout the whole city. Normal prevailing winds would have gone in the other direction and Jacksonville would not have been burned. That's exactly right. A very odd eastward blowing yeah. wind. That is true. And. Uh, city was just uh, lost and, and a re miraculous rebuilding. And still available uh, is a major book about the Great Fire. Absolutely. Published by the Historical Society. An excellent book. Great Fire of 1901 and we, we oh, it's just, it's a marvelous, marvelous book. Another photo. Oh, uh, this is to celebrate the rebuilding of the town. It's 1903. Jacksonville has made a miraculous and astounding recovery. This is part of Gala Week, Gala Week, and this is the Grand Floral Parade. What you don't see among the decorated horse and buggy covered with flowers, you don't see the 33 automobiles. This is the first time in the state's history <laughs> that 33 automobiles had appeared together anywhere in the state of Florida for this grand celebration showing the comeback of what was a devastated town. Now, how did the automobiles get 
to Jacksonville. Well, probably pushed and pulled by well, horses, I mean, but you're right. Some, there wasn't I-95. That's, that's, that's sure. right. Well, some, some of the vehicles were local, but they did bring them in for the special yeah. celebration. I'm sure it was no small feat. And I would imagine about two-thirds could have possibly been from the locale in those days, but not many. It was That was a very big deal. It, 1903, if, a, if an automobile went down your dirt road or shell road in front of your house, you still ran to ran the door to, to see, see it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, another photo. Um, this, of course, is about, it's about 1907. This is at Dixieland Park. This is on what today we call the South Bank in the area of uh, roughly uh, the Radisson, the Treaty Oak, um, and maybe even a little more westward than that. And so there you are. It's a, it was a theme park of the day. It had, sadly, a short-lived history only of a couple of several seasons. But it was like strolling the streets of Paris. People would get dressed up to go to this theme park. Mm -hmm. Well, Emily, uh, we've run out of time. We oh. need more time to uh, show more photos. But we'll do this again. Um, again, a reminder of the program coming up that Judge Pauline Drayton is doing. February 23rd uh, at the Jacksonville Historical Society, 730. More information on our website, www.jackshistory.com. Or 665-0064. That's correct. Emily Liska, thank you for being with us on uh, this segment of the Jacksonville History Show. You're so welcome. Uh, that's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. The Jacksonville History Show is brought to you by the Jacksonville Historical Society and Comcast. Our show is here every Wednesday night at 8. For more information, visit our website at jackshistory.com or call 665-0064. So long, everyone.